You go through the fields and farms of Indonesia and you see great swathes of untended fields with nobody there because the farmer's children have gone to learn to be a taxi driver. They've gone to learn how to make cocktails in the bar. There's nobody left to tend the fields because nobody wants to be a farmer because they don't make enough money as farmers. Om Swastiastu. My name is Rex William Coleridge Sumner. I'm an ex-British officer and a retired writer and I have the honour of being the advisor to Raja Samu Samu VI of Nusa Laut. I was born in Indonesia and I came here to retire essentially to live in Bali which is one of the nicest places in the world in my opinion. Now I'm the advisor to the king and not only is he a king but it turned out that he is the Secretary General of the Association of all the Indonesian kings of which there are still 376. Here in Bali, kings are very much more important than they are in other parts of Indonesia because they are very much part and parcel of daily life with ceremonies. The kingdoms are the repository of culture in Indonesia. And in order to have culture, the ordinary people need to have wealth, which is where we're coming from and why we're working on agriculture. We are encouraging the high-value organic crops. This is Indonesian vanilla. We've got two varieties here. This beautiful black, thick, shiny, glistening, with a wonderful smell to it, this vanilla. This is the highest grade Indonesian vanilla. This cost seven million rupiah for a kilo, $500 a kilo. Compare this is a dry, inflexible bean compared to this one, the shiny, oily, rich one. This one, even though it's horrible, is still selling for six and a half million rupees. $450 a kilo, even though it's poor quality. Why? Because there isn't enough vanilla in the world. Hello, my name is Dadap. Uh, saya orang Bali. Saya bertani. Mungkin saya adalah orang Bali yang sedikit mau bertani. Saya pembuat film. Saya bikin film tentang petani. Saya bikin film tentang politik juga tentang bertema kemanusiaan. Saya membuat film ke hutan-hutan, ke petani-petani di pedalaman. Saya lihat tanaman-tanaman yang ada di alam liar itu tumbuh bagus dan umurnya panjang. Karena memang tidak ada kimia-kimia uh, atau chemical-chemical yang ditambahkan pada tanahnya. Saya menemukan banyak petani dan ternyata petani yang sehat itu ya petani yang menggunakan cara organik. Pertama, oh, oh, kalau pakai kimia, pakai chemical itu tidak sehat buat saya sebagai petani, tidak sehat bagi orang yang akan makan hasil tani ini, kemudian tidak sehat buat tanaman ini, buat pohon juga tidak sehat karena cepat mati, tapi ini semua seedling, semua organic. The cultivation of the vanilla is a little bit complicated and fairly time consuming. From a new plant, second year it might produce a few flowers, but it won't start to really produce until its third and fourth year, because then it's going to be producing six to eight hundred flowers every year. Six to eight hundred flowers is an enormous strain on the plant. We can't pollinate all of those plants because then there would be too many beans growing on the plant and it would kill the plant. You have to hand pollinate the flowers which involves cutting into the petals and pressing the pollen anther down and into the stamen of the flower. Now we have the joys of uh, approaching an Indonesian Balinese farm which is really fun and slippery after the rain and wearing flip-flops is of course the perfect attire to go down here. This is how vanilla plants are grown traditionally. Just planted somewhere on the farm just to see how it goes. You can see that it's grown up here. Look how small the leaves are and it's gone right up here. Nevertheless, it flowered this year and look at these beans coming here, big thick beans here. The farmer has been up this tree like a monkey and has hand pollinated every single one of these flowers and he's done too many. And this is the problem. These beans are about eight centimeters long. Number one quality has to be 15 centimeters long at least. The difference in the way that we grow vanilla is quite simple. 
This is DADAP's special invention that we've created. Look how massive and thick it's going. Why? For the simple reason, it's an orchid. An orchid is an epiphyte. Its roots live in the air. It needs air around it all the time. So DADAP has put this wire around it, good organic wire, which will slowly rot into it and give essential minerals into the plant. And that allows us to keep the coconut husk inside there, which then gets riddled with the roots of the orchid, which gives it the strength to get up so big as it is here. It has another protection. Chickens, they're all free range in Bali. Mm. And when they come in here, they love nothing better than scratching through the husks, eating the roots. So this is chicken proof fencing, <laughs> keeping to protect it. Nobody wants to be a farmer because they don't make enough money as farmers. Because traditionally they've been growing rice. A quintal of rice gets you two million rupee, which is less than $200. When if you're growing a crop like vanilla, one kilo of vanilla brings in at the moment $500. These islands used to be known throughout the world for having the most wonderful quality, and that's gone because of all the middlemen, because the farmers, the people who matter, don't get paid enough. We're going to reverse that. We're going to make sure the farmers get enough money and learn what is the difference between chemical farming of the land to growing traditionally and getting superb quality, full to bursting with flavor, and see the difference in price that they're going to get. That's going to then cascade down through, making more people want to come back